Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we're going to look through how I have completed this Highland cow with the pan pastel background. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils I've used including the colors of the pan pastels and the pencils. If you like this video remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. If you'd like to see more of my work remember you can check me out on Etsy and also add me on Insta. So let's get started. So this is a reference photo I used, it's just from Pixabay and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to try this one as well. So the first thing I did was get my outline on my bit of paper and then I taped around the edge so that when I take the tape up later it'll have a nice crisp edge for framing. If you'd like to see how I did this process of getting the image onto the paper and also the color picking process you can check out my video of the stag which explains the process in more detail. So when I was happy with the colors I had for the cow I then went through and picked out some colors for the pan pastel background. To make it a little bit easier I did it in two or three different sections so for the first section I did the top half which was the sky put in some light blue colors and then at the very top put in the darker blue colors and then just start to blend them sort of into each other. So the good thing with the pan pastels is you can go and put the darker colors over the light colors and then you can go back over with your light colors and make them brighter and lighter which gives you some really good contrast. When it came to putting the color down for the grass and the rocks and things that you can see in the background, I just went in with my sponge tool, put down a heap of the colors that I could see, all of the greens, oranges, darker colors and the purples, and then just started to blend them softly. So after a while I did start to use some makeup brushes and I really find the cotton tips are really helpful when you're trying to blend everything together. So when you have all of the colors in, this is when I start to go in with the silver and titanium white. You use this color with the darker colors as well, just to bring out the lights and darks in the background. And that's what will give it the sort of 3D look and allow it to sort of all blend together rather than just being, you know, greens and oranges next to each other. For the really little details, I did also go in with some dark sepia and green colors in the background with my polychromos pencils as well. So there was a little bit of shrubbery and flowers and things at the front just right in front of the cow and I knew that I wanted to put these in with my polychromos pencils because I wanted them to be a little bit more in focus rather than blurry like the background is. So I left this section to do at the end after I'd finished the cow. So now it was time to work on the cow. The only issue is when you rub your hand on the pan pastel that you've already put down, it will just rub straight off and it'll smudge everywhere. So I went in and cut out some tracing paper, stuck it over the back just so that I wouldn't risk smudging any of the pan pastel that I've already put down. So when it came to putting in the cow, I just focused on putting in different sections of the cow and then later on I will go in and fix up the background. So I didn't want to try and extend the cow or make it any bigger to meet the background. I will meet the background to the cow at the end. So for the horns, I did a base of the mauve and the ultramarine, also using the warm grey one and then went over with the dark indigo and the dark sepia to darken them up. I did use some of my Holbein soft white pencil to make it sort of look shiny in that shiny texture and give it some of the highlights on the horns as well. And then when it comes to the hair on this sort of thing I just sort of pick clumps at a time and work on sort of little sections. So what I did was go in with my warm grey one, ivory, the beige red, and burnt ochre pencil start to put in all of the shapes that you can see and the darker area with the burnt ochre and then start to build in the darker colors like the terracotta sanguine burnt sienna 10 percent adds a little bit of pink to it and then the burnt sienna caput mortem violet and walnut brown so it's just a matter of picking small sections putting in that section and then blending it all down. And I knew at the end there are a lot of sort of flyaway hairs and things like that. So I knew at the end I would use my slice tool just to slice out a couple of these messy bits to make it look, look a little bit more higgledy piggledy rather than sort of like spaghetti. So for some of the sections, especially in the ears, there are sort of lighter, whiter hairs that are going over the darker hairs. So I did go in with my embossing tool and put down some embossed lines to make sure that I keep 
keep that white and light hair around the darker sections and then I just use the negative space method which just means that I go around the lighter hairs with the darker colors to make them stand out. So for the size of this portrait it is only an 8 by 8 inch so it's not very big but it does help to break down each of the sections and do them sort of one at a time. When it came to the nose I went in with a base of the warm grey one and started to work in some of the burnt sienna 10% which is that really light pink colour. Started to add in some of the burnt ochre, the ivory and where it's sort of a darker colour I used some of the walnut brown, caput mortem violet and made, in, made sure to put in some violet as well. There were some sort of white wispy hairs on the right hand side of the nostril so I did use the embossing tool just to make sure that I'm going to capture them and keep them in there. And remember that it's just a matter of slowly doing each section one at a time and you can always go back and darken things and you can lighten things up with your scalpel or slice tool, your white waxy pencil and fix the values and the shadows at the end. Because sometimes when you're so close to the piece and you're not stepping back, it can sort of look a little bit strange or you feel like it's not working. But then when you step back and have a look, you can sort of evaluate the tones and see where it's working and where you need to add more detail. So remember when you're putting in your strokes to go in the direction of the fur and also against the direction of the fur. But you want to make sure you're going in the actual direction that the fur is going. Because if you're starting to do vertical strokes where it's meant to be horizontal, it won't look very realistic. So make sure to follow the direction of the fur and pay really close attention to your reference photo. So now that I had the majority of the cow in, I had to do some experimenting on how I was going to do the front section because I didn't know if I wanted to 100% do it with the polychromos pencils and a little bit of the pan pastels or I just wanted to go in 100% with the pan pastels so I got this little bit of paper started to swatch down some of the colors that I've used and then started to go over those with my polychromos pencils to see if I could draw sort of little flowers and little bits and pieces that I could do at the front. I wasn't really happy with this process and I wasn't really loving the idea of using the pan pastels and then going over with the polychromos. So I thought I will just do the whole thing with polychromos and then I can go over with the lighter colors or darker colors with the pan pastels if I need to. But I did pretty much do all of the shrubbery and the bushes at the front here with the polychromos pencils. Again, just working on little sections at a time and I made too sure to incorporate the yellows, oranges, purples that I had used in the cow in the actual shrubbery at the front. For some of this, I did just wing it and I didn't follow the reference photo 100% because it just would have taken too long and been too tricky. Um, but yeah, I feel like it sort of came out well in the end and I just made sure to go over with a heap of layers and sort of blend it together. Then finally, when all of the grass was in and the cow was in, then I just used my cotton tip and some of the pan pastels to link all of the sections together and using some of the polychromos as well to make the foreground look a bit more forward and the background look a little bit more like it's in the background. And I wanted to blend in the background a little bit more to the cow and the shrubbery at the front so that it's not sort of like a white glow around the pencil section and the pan pastel section. So then I do what I always do is usually go out and show my partner and get some feedback from him and then I leave it for a day or two and come back and make any adjustments that I feel like it needs. This one is a present for my brother for Christmas so I hope that he likes it. I'll be gifting it to him in a couple of days and after I've gifted it to him I'll release this video. So this is the final result. I really hope that you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you like this one and what you would like to see in in the future. I would love to do more backgrounds like this one. I do think it is very effective in some pieces and really want to get used to the pan pastels and getting more comfortable with those. I will see you in the next video. Have a good Christmas and New Year. Keep drawing. Thanks guys. Bye. I'm put up with changes. Come pick me up because I just want to see the light. I want to be weightless. Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by yeah. I 
Just see her face where ever I look, she's standing in the crowd. So let go, let go. I don't want to, but I'm gonna try. When she left me, yeah, but a little bit inside, you know, you know, maybe things are gonna be alright. Cause I just wanna see the light. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. So come open up my door. I don't wanna be here and let the one pass me by. I won't see your face. 